And I suppose Slate you can appoint there. us. Yes, and I'm going to appoint, well, I'll wait to see if we're on. We're not on. Here we go. Okay, so uh, it is the uh, Thursday, June 19th, 2014, meeting of the Littleton Zoning Board of Appeals. We have called the first case, 715 PM case, number 832A. Thank you, of Andranik Movsisian. And I will appoint as the voting alternates Alan Bell and Rod Stewart. Two, three, four, five. That makes five of us. And you'll then present your case. We'll ask the board for questions and comments, and then we'll ask any of the abutters. So introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is Andranik Movsisian. I am the owner of One Padakwe, Little Token. Uh, this house. Uh, and uh, now I would like to finish my uh, attic. Uh, so I'm asking for to give me permission to finish my attic as a playroom for my kids. I have two kids, uh, five years old, and seven months. Uh, there will be no constructional changes or additions, uh, just uh, finishing the walls. And uh, there will be some storage area uh, next to the sides. Uh, I'm not sure if you received my statement uh, picture. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you get that. Uh, so that uh, on the picture there is white lines where I indicated the storage area where it's going to be on both sides. And also you can notice that sides are uh, doesn't have flooring. So there is only uh, a drywall mm -hmm. uh, on the ceiling of the garage. That room is over the garage. So uh, if somebody steps there, it will fall down. Also, uh, some kind of danger uh, for to kids to play there. So it's uh, not useful right now. Uh, as a storage, it's a little bit dirty. We cannot use it as a storage. So we would like to finish it and uh, make those storage areas. And, uh, also, this room is, entrance to this room is from the bedroom. Right from the bedroom, bedroom. Uh, on the picture you can see the door of the bedroom, uh, and uh, from that bedroom you enter into that side. So, that's, that's it. Um, I'm going to just ask you some questions for clarification. When you purchased the property, you understood that it was a property subject to a comprehensive permit, and that there were restrictions on number of rooms, number of bedrooms, and uh, finishing spaces like this. You understood that? Yeah. And I know, because I was involved when you went for your application, I know that you had a question about whether you should bring this matter before us as an amendment to the comprehensive permit, as a special permit to finish a room, or as a variance to finish a room. Um, and I spoke to the building inspector about this, and he gave you some direction to go about this. So your choice of bringing this as a variance is technically um, not correct, and, and procedurally, I have a couple of problems. Conceptually, I support what you're trying to do 100%. I have kids, and if I could send them somewhere in a room that I could close off with all their toys, it would be wonderful. But, but procedurally, I have a problem, because this board has authority to grant variances only upon a showing of hardship and some other factors. We can only modify a special permit if it's an insubstantial change, a comprehensive permit, if it's an insubstantial change, and in my opinion, if only if it comes through the developer, but we can talk about that as a board. And I don't think this is uh, a case where we can grant a special permit. So we as a board have to decide procedurally how to proceed with this. We did get a letter from the building inspector, but first I want to pull the board and see if the board has any thoughts or comments about this application and what we might, how we might proceed. Mr. Francois. I would I think we should get the comments from the building inspector first and then, then get in. I'm going to pull the board first okay. because that's the order I said I would go in. First the board, then comments, and then uh, about our comments, and then back to the board. Didn't we have a similar case? We had a similar case. The developer came. Yes. And we talked about it in some form. This was an attic. What, 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 what were we doing before? I think it was a very similar case, and I think the developer came and had already put up a dividing wall such that 
the finished attic space being proposed by the developer could have conceivably been used as a bedroom. And I think we granted permission to allow him to use it as finished uh, habitable space provided he took down the wall that would make it more like a bedroom and left it open so it clearly wasn't going to be an additional bedroom. So procedurally, how did that, that proceeded by the developer coming in and presenting the situation. But was did they seek a variance or a modification? They were seeking. Or, or, or we, the discussion was that it was insubstantial. I think that was. Well, they want what they what they were trying to do was substantial, and we asked them if they wanted to go through the process of conducting new hearings on a substantial change or if they wanted to modify their plans to satisfy our concerns mm -hmm. and then it would be dealt with as insubstantial and that's how we dealt with it as insubstantial the minutes are actually attached to the okay. package so Good job, Shelley. so how can we pigeonhole this into that similar process um, I suppose we could do, I suppose what we could do is get the developer to authorize him to present on the developer's behalf, which I'm sure wouldn't be a problem, and then we could call this an insubstantial if we wanted to go that route. Uh, maybe we could even vote it conditioned on the developer's statement coming in that he authorizes him to petition on his behalf and kind of vote it the same way as an insubstantial amendment of comprehensive permit for this specific purpose and then condition it, that might be a way to go. It seems like we ought to have some method because this won't be the only Well, we, we did say that. Years. Yeah, we did say that when the developer was here before. Um, I think that the, I think that the intent always was a density uh, problem. That we limit bedrooms for septic purposes and for density. That, that's a dense neighborhood and we didn't want uh, additional occupants and residents to create additional traffic. And the reason the other one was objectionable was because that was going to be for a grown child of the residents to take up residency there as if it were an accessory dwelling for another whole family unit. Now, um, any other board comments and then I'll read the letter of the building inspector into the record. <coughs> Yeah, you know, I understand and kind of agree with what Mr. Yates was just saying. If we do take this as deciding it's insubstantial and allowing it, we could put restriction or condition on that that it's not to be used as a sleeping area, which is the term under the state building code. That would reflect back to the when you go for building permit, now it, the plan submitted to the building inspector should be noted not to be used as a sleeping area, or he can note that, and then once a permit's issued and finalized, and the <coughs> certificate of occupancy at that point would reflect that as the same. Um, this has happened and been done many times before, and as long as it's clearly marked on the plans, then we can put to rest the idea as though it would be an additional bedroom or not. So I think we could condition it to that. Okay, let's read the building inspector's comment into the record. You can have a seat now, thank you. I'm sorry, I should have said that sooner. One paddock way, the applicant is seeking a variance from the Littleton Zoning Bylaws 173.6b4 comprehensive permits. The Littleton Board of Appeals granted a 40B special permit, the homes at Kimlock Farms, which was completed with stipulated restrictions prior to construction and sale. The owner of one paddock seeks to amend the 40B special permit by proposing to make habitable the attic space over the garage that was approved for storage only. It is recommended that the Board of Appeals reject this request for a variance. And Rod, could I ask you to read the pertinent section of the prior decision? Do we have a decision? Or just, it's just from the minutes, it's not yeah. the actual well, decision. Well, th that's in regards to uh, 120 Goldsmith Street different piece of property on, on the same conference of permit. Yeah, so I just want to see what we did the last time. Um, as you know, the decisions of the Zoning Board of Appeals 
don't establish precedents, we don't have to go by them, but it's always um, good, I think, to remain a little bit constant. So you want to? From the minutes. Yeah, I, I please, yeah. yeah. Okay, it was moved uh, by Jeff Ye Yates to allow for a finished space designed as an attic on the floor plans to remain heated and insulated on the condition that the existing walls and doors separating the rooms be removed with the exception of a 36-inch high wall on both sides of the stairs. For the wall not uh, now stands, this approval is only for eight paddock way and seconded by Ellen Bell. So basically, so take down the wall but keep a 36-inch uh, wall on either side of the stairs for safety purposes. Well, we don't have that same situation here because this room doesn't abut the staircase. This is like through the bedroom, right? Yes. It further says is this same minutes for that same case um, because they were add because some of the board members felt in the discussion last night here on the first page some board members felt that the proposal should be considered substantial because if allowed for this unit all other units could potentially add a room this would increase the density of an already um, tight area. Um, later on, it says that after more discussion relating to high walls and handrails, the board agreed that the amended proposal was insubstantial. Yeah, yeah. Is because, this, excuse me, go ahead. Is this off your master bedroom? No, it's uh, from the another uh, child's bedroom. Another child's bedroom? Yeah, it's a three bedroom. It, it looks awfully like a large closet to me. I, I'm thinking the same thing. You I know, mean, I, I just don't it, see it, it as a separate room where you have to go through one if, room to if get If we're to talking other. about storage, it could be still referred to as a storage room for toys. If, so what if it's heated it's and finished? Show. Well, but... I mean, does it... I want to know if it meets fire code safety features, which I assume it does. Well, it has a window. has a window. It has a big window. And there must be fireproofing between the garage and that space. So, to me, it looks like a big closet, any way I look at it. So, none of us, I think, are disagreeing that the result should come out that way. Mm -hmm. The question is how we get there, because Mr. Bernier rejected his request to finish it off without him coming here. And so now that he's here, we're trying to figure out where to slot it so that it's conforming to decisions we've made in the past and our comprehensive permit decision. Okay, how about we phrase it as he's allowed to finish it as a heated finished storage area and we do not consider it another room since you must currently go through a bedroom to get to it. Well, that's the same, would be the same situation as the other one. No, right? because that one had its own staircase and was its own room. Staircase, but it emptied into one bedroom and then you turn left into that area. Well, no, but you could turn left into one room and right into one yeah. room. And yeah. we just wanted it to be one room. Right. Okay. The, the key thing here, you know, is that you can't say play about storage room and have it used as a play room. Building code, code health regulations, whatever else would take exception to that. I think we could say it's insubstantial and allow it to be a play room with the stipulation, clearly back on the plans submitted for a building permit and for which CFO would be issued, clearly back on that, not to be used as a sleeping area. And I think that's the main concern that we had in the whole development, is that you add another sleeping area, you're adding more bedrooms. So before you go any further, I need to ask if there's any abutters present who want to speak to this petition. I imagine you would, Mrs. <laughs> yeah. My wife. Speak, would you, would you introduce yourself and you may speak. Uh, I'm Diana Babayan, uh, I'm Lamix wife. And yeah, just, there are lots of toys, you know, in the first floor, all over. Just I wanted to be one big room to put all there and play together, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, If you say not for sleeping and one of the babies falls asleep while playing, is that all right? <laughs> that's, that's not the same as the sleeping area. I know. Yeah, I know. Oh, is there intended to be a door, what, a door, <coughs> excuse me, door here to close it off, or is yes. it a fairly wide opening like yes, a yeah. There's an existing door. Yeah. Yep, yeah, door already there. Because this looks pretty wide in this picture. 
Wide angle camera. Door is white? Yeah, it looks white. That's just the. Uh, that's just the oh, camera. you mean the room itself is white? No, no the, the door. door uh, is there is there a regular door here? Yeah, it's regular. It's smaller than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I a think door allows, I think I do like. Go ahead. A door does allow it to be closed off and used as a bedroom. Maybe we restrict it with no closet or something. But I'm not sure how. The, the building codes work with respect to a bedroom that you have to pass through another bedroom to get to. If that kind of negates that as a bedroom or what? Traditionally, it doesn't. Traditionally, it, it because there in the olden days, all bedrooms frequently went through one another in, in real estate and appraisals. We don't count them as not bedrooms because you have to go through one to get to another. But, I mean, it's a slope ceiling. This is... What does the building code say about a bedroom? The there, there's no restriction on it. Um, and there's no restriction that a bedroom has to have a closet. So you can have an open room without, because I know of people who would be, they'll actually what's called portable closets. There uh, actually is a little to Again, know. they make it very clear in the building code end of it, as they have it very clearly labeled, not to be used as a sleeping area. Doesn't mean people do, but if anything should come back, it's the owner's liability and you know, not the building code. I, um, I, do, I do like the idea of getting them the requested result. Okay. I do not like the idea of doing it as a variance. Right. I do like the idea of calling it an insubstantial modification of the comprehensive permit and I I'm stuck on this I don't think each owner in a comprehensive permit project should have maybe I'm wrong but I don't think each separate owner should have the right to come back to petition for an amendment to the comprehensive permit granted to a specific developer nor do I think once the project is sold out that developer hangs around so we couldn't as a practical matter get a developers approval in every instance um, this is probably a condominium association as far as the septic goes. Do you have like a condo association lying yeah. underneath you? So maybe we could establish some procedure that in the future when we do these, there has to be a consent or an authorization by the condo association for an applicant to come forward. And that might also protect the the Restrictions that we just put, for example, on the 15 Great Road Project and all the things they said about bedrooms, don't worry, it'll be protected by the condominium documents. And that maybe should be the procedure we follow, that while we still have a developer in the picture, I don't think he sold everything out, has he, over there? He sold eight houses. He sold all eight. Yeah, they were sold. Last one was sold, I believe, half a year ago. And who's the condo association trustees, do you know? Uh, actually, the builder was, the builder itself was the condo association. As far as I know, they would like to do some changes now because uh, the Because the boat is out, so you really don't have an association. So uh, I, like, I really like your idea of the, of the way to handle it in the future. I don't think their association is far enough that this, they possibly can do it. But shall we, can we, I keep coming back to if we call it a closet. We, um, I, th I think we just leave it as a playroom. As what I like the idea of making it the same insubstantial, we call it an insubstantial change. Maybe we can just dot our eyes by getting one of the developers to send a letter to stick in the file. And if I don't know if you can call them. If you can't call them, I yeah, will, or I'll have Shelley email them. And we'll just get them to put a letter in the file saying that the developer requested it. And that, I think, or the developer authorized you to request it is really what it needs to say authorize the owner of one paddock way to represent uh, the interest. And then I think we can get there without a problem. Okay. So I should ask uh, the builder to send some letter? Yes. Uh, they can just call uh, the administrator and she'll tell them. Uh, can we approve them contingent upon yes. receiving that letter? Is yeah. the builder the same as the developer? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> Dick Marash or James D'Agostin. They were here in front of us. Is he the builder, or just because he? Yes, yeah, he was the builder also. It was the, he was okay. the builder also. So, it, it, he's like very I said, much if, if um, but if you have any difficulty getting it, Shelley will let let her know, and she'll let no, me know. No, I can. Okay. I calling him several times. Good. Okay. Different questions. 
Okay, so at the board's pleasure, um, you want to close the hearing and deliberate and vote? Motion to close. Second. Seconded by Alan. All those in favor of closing the hearing, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, um, deliberation over, so I just want to make a motion. I made the motion for one paddock way B, which is property under Chapter 40B comprehensive permit. Um, change the proposed attic over drive to be changed to a playroom to be considered to be an insubstantial change. Um, and that it will be designated as not to be used as a sleeping area for building permits and certificate of occupancy. Can I ask you to word it more consistently with this one? Because that way we can just say that we treated all of the. <coughs> but it's a different situation. Yeah, but I think you can slot it in here. Okay. The one paddock way, an insubstantial change to allow the attic to be finished space. To be heated and insulated. Okay, to be heated and insulated. On the condition. Well, that, that doesn't apply. Well, he's on the condition that it not be. Uh, not be used as a sleeping area. The rest of that and you want to say not be space. used as a bedroom? Not to be used as a sleeping area. You want a sleeping area because that's how the building code defines it. Then <laughs> <coughs> could we add this approval is only for whatever it's one, one paddock? One paddock. It, yeah. it, it, it went with paddock way, so it does go on only with one. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll draft the decision up, but it, it won't be a final decision until you bring us that letter, okay? I'll tell you in a minute. So, second to the motion, please. Did he say, did he add in his motion subject to receiving this letter? No, I don't. We don't want it in the decision. We'll just hold the decision back until we get the letter. The letter will be in in a day. Okay, or two. so we just go ahead and vote anyway. Yeah. No. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. No, if we put a condition on it, then when it goes to record, you don't know if the condition's been met or not. Yeah, so. but I mean, at least in the minutes of the meeting, a condition. Yes. We were it's in the minutes, yeah. Okay. Um, all I want you to do is tell the builder that he needs to write a letter authorizing you <coughs> to request <coughs> this modification to his permit. Okay? Just, I authorize the owner of one paddock way to request a modification to the permit. If he doesn't, if he has any questions, just tell him to call her. Okay, is there some form which he can fill out? No, he just needs to email. Oh, email? Yeah, he can just email a letter. He'll know, okay. he'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. And, and if not, tell him to call me. Uh, okay, uh, he should send email to which address? Yes. The one you sent it today, the statement. Oh, okay. Uh, so I will just call him and say, uh, please uh, authorize uh, you. Me? To ask for a change to the permit to let you Last finish your attic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Case number 833A, the case of Jeff Arimento for a special permit or a variance from section 173.6. <coughs> For a motor vehicle service station in the industrial B zone at 170 Air Road. Time is 7.40 p.m. And you must be Jeff Arman. I am Jeff Arman. And I think you were here to hear how we proceed. You start, we ask questions, we give you a hard time, and then if there's any butters, they give you a hard time. We one moment. Four standard members. Okay. We need to pick an alternate. I think that becomes for Patrick. You're my alternate. How's that? Now, I just have a little procedural matter with you two. You, you can be seated if you want. I'll okay. We're a little informal here. So, let's see what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> You're here. See if I can 
give a little summary of why I think you're here. You're here because you went to the planning board for a site plan approval to, as your letter says, um, show some classic luxury cars for sale. And the planning board didn't know where to send you because there's a recently enacted bylaw that was voted at town meeting that hasn't really been approved yet by the attorney general, but it's, if one approved, it'll be dated back to the town meeting vote, that takes away from authority of the planning board um, you operating a motor vehicle service station in a water resource district, which you are at 170 Air Road. And the prior zoning bylaw, before that vote, said planning board could approve it, could approve a motor vehicle service station in the water resource district on special permit from the planning board. The new bylaw, if you're on page 27 of our zoning bylaw book, see there's a P under water resource. The new bylaw now has an N, meaning it's not permitted in a water resource. Now the problem with you is that that prohibits a motor vehicle service or washing station. And I don't think you are either. So that's the background, what brought you here. And why don't you present your case and then we'll play with those. But under the motor vehicle service station, it also says and or sale of vehicles. Right. right. So yeah, car sales could, could go with that. But yeah. we'll talk about that when we get to it. I just wanted everyone to have the background of why he's here. Now present your case, please. Uh, my name is Jeff Armento. I own or am a co-owner of the building at uh, 170 Air Road. In that building, uh, we are operating a car wash distribution company um, that I'm also a co-owner of, of, of that business. Um, the facility currently is used to house the back shop people, uh, four to six people at any given time, and we store parts for car washes uh, at the facility. It's not a, we don't wash cars, uh, we sell equipment and, and service car washes all over New England. Um, so it's, it's basically just a storage facility. Uh, myself and some of my employees were car enthusiasts. We've been car guys, gearheads our whole life. And uh, we've always thought about, you know, going out to, an au to the auctions, buying a classic car or two, and you know, trying to rehab it and, uh, and put it up for sale. Um, so that's why we're looking for the license. We're not looking to uh, purchase vehicles that need restoration. We're looking for vehicles that need, uh, you know, minor cosmetic things, uh, for instance, paint buffed out, uh, washed, clean, detailed, and then can be put up for sale mainly on the internet. Um, and, and we're not even really doing this to make a profit. It's more of a, a fun kind of thing. Um, we are being in the business of of uh, setting up car washes all around the area. Uh, we have you know, customers of ours who are involved in doing the detailing and rehabbing these cars. So our plan would be to purchase a vehicle that again needs the the minor type work. Uh, we would give it to them to to buff out the paint detail and clean it up, all that kind of stuff. And then we would bring it to our facility. Mainly they would be parked inside and we would put them online. Um, and, uh, and we would occasionally show a car or two um, in one of the existing spots that is adjacent to 2A. I wouldn't expect that we're gonna get much from that spot because it's blocked by a sign and there's bushes. And I mean, it's you can kind of see it, but uh, that's not our intention to have um, you know customers coming uh, and purchasing cars in a used car lot type of environment. So I don't that. So did you go to the planning board yet? Yes. And what did the planning board give you? Uh, they approved it. They were fine with it. Did they give you a restriction on it? I heard there was a restriction. Um, I believe the restriction was three vehicles. Which three was outdoor vehicles. Outside. Yeah, vehicles. no more than three vehicles outside. Outside. At the time, which they didn't restrict how many would be inside. I think the selectmen did five, didn't they? Uh, the, uh, water, the water does not three to five. Three to five total. Yeah, I mean, my, I'm thinking we're never going to have more than one or two total, so I'm fine, but three to five is fine. I know, three, including the ones inside. Yeah, yeah, no, I, again, this is, a, I don't think we're going to have more than one to two vehicles inside out there at any given time, period. Can I ask a couple questions? Yes, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to drive by you, but I'm pretty familiar. Can you tell me which building you are? So when you're, uh, if you're coming from here, uh, when you get to uh, the sign that says 160 Air Road, this cherry stone furniture, yep. um, when you turn into that, we're immediately on the road. So okay, building, so you're part of that cherry, the one that furniture business? No, when, so oh, you're the, the cherry stone furniture building is here, you turn Left Isn't there in, like a Whistler place in the back there? Or there used to be uh, a radar this power, um, Yeah, I think Power Wash America is behind us. We're the building 
uh, here. So you, right, you would, to get the cherry stone, you would turn left and then turn left into them. We are on the right when you come off the uh, you, off to it. Can you give me an example of the kind of cars that you would be doing? Um, mainly muscle cars, you know, Corvettes, Camaros of the 60s, 70s, those kind okay. of cars. Sounds like fun. That's the plan. And maybe a motorcycle too as well. I mean, we're talking vehicles, so it could be a car, it could be a motorcycle. Yeah. And again, it's not, it is absolutely not our core business. The intention is not to make it our core business. The intention really isn't even to make money. It's more just, it would be fun. Good to go to the auctions and buy it. So you have approval for the planning board. Yeah. Do you have the selectment approval yet? That, I guess, comes last. Okay. It told me to do these two and then uh, okay. go there and, and get the actual license. a variance from us, and I, that's a variance from uh, not be allowed under the water resource area. Okay, but what I, I want to talk about that for a minute, just because it kind of seems hard to do the hardship thing. Well, well, yeah, I, I've got a hardship problem, but I don't think it's squarely in there because motor vehicle service station is defined as premises devoted to retail sale of fuel and lubricants and or washing and or repair and or sales or storage of motor vehicles. These premises are not devoted to that. Right. This is a secondary or an accessory use. So, should we go to the accessory use bylaw? Because could we do it as a special uh, permit? I'm not sure if it's because accessory this isn't their uses. primary business, is what you're saying. That's so right. this is just an accessory business off the side. Why would be generous tonight? <laughs> yes, we're being very generous, but the point is, I don't want to, I'm not sure I want to do it as a variance because this bylaw is a is not a workable bylaw. We've seen that. You're the good test example that yes. this bylaw isn't working. Yeah. And I would like the town meeting floor to modify, or planning board, to modify a non-working bylaw, not this board. So if I can get you under accessory use and a special permit under accessory use. Well, we can do it square footage wise. You said it's an 8,000 square foot warehouse. Uh, the warehouse portion of the building is 8,000 square foot. The entire floor print of the building is 10,5. And three cars would take up six to 800 square feet. Not well, even three outside. He said two to five inside. Well, let's say he moves inside and outside. Yeah. You know. but, but we're talking about well under. The thirty percent threshold in the bylaw. Yes. yes. So, so we fit. We fit under the assessor. Yeah, I mean it's really about maximum ten percent <coughs> of the uh, existing building. Yeah, car. So our car is seventeen by seven. So wait a minute. So if we consider him using an uh, area that's five hundred square feet, that's really quite a bit of space, and yet is under well under the ten percent. Well, and surely more than five cars fit in 500 square feet, so it's, well, that's just being generous. So let me Well, I don't know about the 500 because, you know, let's assume it's 200 square feet per car. But if, if he used 30% of 8,000 or whatever it is, 10,500, so let's say that it's 30, you know, he could use up to 3,000 square feet and still be under the accessories. So he's well under now, can we do the accessory use as a special permit, not a variance? Well, under the water resource section, there is no, the accessory use here doesn't cover, cover that. So I don't know where you, under there you would, you would cover it. Well, the, this covers... You, you still got to deal with two things. You get your, your use classifications and then uses under... Where there's no entry in this schedule, the underlying district requirements are controlling. So he's not in here, so we can ignore Okay. The water resource yeah. and go right back to can you do an accessory use in the what are you industrial? Yeah, it's uh, industrial. Industrial B. 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 Yeah. Which you can. What's that? Which I think I appreciate. I think you can. can. Yeah, I think you can. If you can do the motor vehicle service station in the industrial yes. B, then he can do an accessory use motor vehicle service station in industrial B. I, I like this approach because then it also limits the size, the amount. And I, I do want I do want our, our um, decision to say maximum five cars in possession at a time, whether you're inside outside. Sure. Now um, there is a there is a letter from the zoning uh, enforcement officer, 170 Road, applicant is seeking a special permit to permit a motor vehicle service station 
as defined in 173.2 of the Littleton Zoning Bylaw in a water resource district pursuant to 173.61 of the Littleton Zoning Bylaws. No further comment. So, any other board members have any comment? I suppose we'll restrict what he can do there <clears throat> as far as washing, changing oil, storage, oil, things like that. Makes sense. Any abutters want to speak to the application? I'll entertain a motion. Do you have any questions, Mr. Joyce? No. So we're doing under 173.26. So are we actually what? Special. Special permit was an accessory okay, use. Accessory use. Now, Bill, where did you see the accessory permit for industrial B? You need 173.26? Page 14, top of the uses motor vehicle service station, which includes car sales. Okay. Um, comes across the IA and IB is both A, which is a special permit for the okay. okay, I see. Yeah, I think that's what we've got. A special then, we, then we need to just dis at least discuss that uh, not substantial, no. Not, not more substantial derogating to the neighborhood and what's already happening in that. <coughs> Can we move to the close and then we'll deliberate and put that in there? Are we going to have that discussion before you close? No, because we're not we're not adding any new information. We want to open discussion between ourselves. No, no, no. You still have to have, you have your discussion, you have your findings, then you have your decision. You make your decision after you close the hearing. You still have to have a discussion of information added in before you close the hearing. That you, now you're going to make your findings on, now you make your decision on. Um, so if, a simple little conversation is all you need. We don't need him to uh, satisfy us that he's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than existing because he's in an industrial zone and this is an allowed use in the industrial zone. And his narrative expressed that he's uh, going to be sort of benign. <laughs> Special permit criteria. Um, the, the I'm not challenging you. I'm you, saying I don't well, think we need a full discussion on it. We don't need a full discussion. We just need some information thrown in. And, uh, yeah, I uh, said he threw it in his he threw it in his application narrative to us and we've talked about it and discussed it right now. So now can we close the hearing? I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, would we like to discuss? I'd like the decision, I think we should grant it, but I'd like the decision to specify no more than five vehicles at any time um, in, his in the possession or on the property with this intent. Somehow, I don't want to limit it to not being able to park his own cars right, there. Right, with the intent to sell, right, right. hell to sell, sell. Right. I, I would prefer not to pick a number because I think that there's two boards, perhaps three boards that are going to be limiting his numbers. I, I have no problem um, limiting a percentage of the floor area as you discussed because the accessory use gives us the power to limit the size that he uses. How did the planning board, do we have the planning board's decision here? What did what the planning board do? I mean, what is the rule? The they... wasn't ready yet. There's just an email saying that it was granted. What was granted? What is uh, the, the site plan review for yeah. retail sales of motor vehicles? Yeah, just said they have to wait many days till They said no more than three. He's still got to go to the selectmen, and the selectmen may, in their wisdom, give him six. Yeah. So I don't want our board to say five. I, I wouldn't mind our board saying ten percent. We we discussed. We discussed the floor area he's requested, and we It'll can't go more than 30. So let's say 10 percent, no more than 10 percent. I mean, the, the two area. car garage is 500 square feet. So, okay. You know. 10 percent okay with you? Yeah. And then I think Rod suggested, and it made good sense, that it not be used for uh, for um, washing, washing and oil changes. And oil changes. Yeah, basically servicing of the cars. Not, yeah. not be used for servicing the cars. It's to be used for retail showroom only. So you're storing and selling them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually. And, and showing. People would come there to see them. Right. Yeah. I mean, 
I think obviously on a day like today, we would pull one of them out and park it in one of those parking spots. Would anything come of that? Depends on looking unlike Depends on what color it is. Right, you never know. Because yeah. the, if, really, if the sun hits it just media. right. <laughs> the visibility at that, if you know the building, coming this way, there's two big signs. Yeah. I mean, you'd see the car kind of flash. I'm not even high, aware of the little parking area that they show on the yeah. side plan that we yeah, would see be that, using. Yeah, you're looking at that. Yeah, it's yeah. a small. You could fit three cars there along the road, but I, I primarily view this. So you're thinking these spaces these right here. Oh, we can't ask him. We'll we'll see. <laughs> we can't ask him any more questions. We close the hearing. <laughs> okay, so we're limiting it to ten percent of his business base. And no, it's oh, it's space, it's yeah. gross, gross it's floor base area. Of, of his gross boy wall area. Not to you may want to because we have two floors of office, so I assume you, you mean. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Um, well, we we need to somehow delineate it a little bit more because if his suddenly he takes over the whole building. And suddenly, is he going to have a dozen cars there? I mean, the idea is this is this, and it's not just him. It's whoever takes over his business behind him, and on and on and on. So we need to do a little bit more than just say ten percent. How about not more than eight hundred square feet? He said eight thousand, and eight hundred square feet okay. is more than he needs, and that's ten percent. How's that? So no more than eight hundred square feet gross floor area. Eight hundred square feet floor area. And to be used as a retail sales and showroom, not for washing and servicing and oil change, right? Do we want to say out, outdoor uh, display display limited to three vehicles? Yeah, I think that's what the county board said. Yeah, want to say that? Do we refer to other conditions imposed by other boards? Okay. Or? We can. Okay. Can we limit it to muscle cars and motorcycles? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely at least leave them out there on Saturday when people are going. I have this vision of this really beautiful old Roy, Rolls Royce or something. <laughs> Any other comments or insertions or <laughs> cautions? Anyone? Patrick? You okay with this? Yes. Patrick loves his old cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'll be down. He'll be <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> okay, how about a motion? Want to state it so you get out of the okay, I'd like someone to make a motion. I make a motion as she states. <laughs> make a motion that we grant a special permit for an accessory use. Under 173.26. Under 173.26 to the applicant for. No, no. To the address, not the applicant. So, 170. 170 Hero yep. Road. To allow uh, no more than 800 square feet for retail sales and showroom for um, specialty motor vehicles, uh, provided that there be no washing, servicing, or oil change uh, conducted, and to allow an outdoor display of no, for, for not more than three vehicles at the address. Sorry, cannot say. Cannot that those items washing and cannot be done for the vehicles that are intended for sale because the other business has vehicles there as well that has nothing to do with are they washing and changing oil? No, but you know, if we I don't know if we even can change oil on one of those vehicles there or not, we haven't. That was no, you're in a water resource area. Saying, we shouldn't be doing that. Anyway. No, we don't need to that. specify because you shouldn't be doing that yeah, anyway that in our water resource area, okay. and we're not, but I'm okay. Just, so we don't we don't need to specify or, or delineate that. Okay. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about uh, to my board member, fellow board members, is it seems to me that if you have a pollen day, you need to hose or rinse these off to show them. And so, no washing at all seems a little bit harsh. Okay. No servicing, basically. I'd rather say no servicing. 
No servicing of the motor vehicles and Repair. not be specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Air oil, oil change or servicing? I just think servicing. I think you cover repair and oil change that way. Yeah. And you don't tie his hands. If he's got, you know, if he's got a, a lead that fell off the carburetor, you should be able to open the hood and put it back on. Is that what you say? Lead? Uh, Something. The terminal. Okay. <laughs> so so no, uh, no service of motor. <coughs> okay. Is that all right with everyone? Okay. That's the motion. You stated it. Cheryl's made it. Second, please. Second. Bill seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We do be aware that it is our water resource area. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you do end up hosing it down, they'll be using a lot of directions and things. Yeah, sure. We, uh, we have a very environment with the, the chemicals that we sell or we distribute. Uh, we review all the environmental friendly stuff and actually we just drive them down the street because we wash for free here and there, so we just drive the street, wash them, and bring them back. So. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Sorry to hold you up. It's now 8 o'clock, and we have the hearing of 14 million players. Let me open the hearing, please. <coughs> Why do we schedule these every 15 minutes? Because that makes me move along. Okay. Um, this is a discussion on case number 694A, Manion Place Development LLC, modification of a 40B comprehensive permit at 14 Manion Place. I think this one is here only because we have a loose end and we just want to wrap it up. Uh, good evening, members of the board. My name is Melissa Robbins. I'm the attorney for Manion Place Development LLC, and Sherry's absolutely right. You're here because of my lousy bookkeeping. I was here uh, about a year ago. We had some issues regarding a removal of a fence, and we instead replaced them with some arborvitaes. There were conditions placed by the board. Um, all of the conditions actually have transpired uh, about six or seven months ago. However, um, the modification was never signed. So I'm getting ready to do the transfer of the condominium association out of the developer into the association, and I have nothing that says that they don't have to have a fence there uh, because I never brought the modification before the board to actually sign. Um, so I went, uh, Sherry had sent me over the minutes and I went back through the vote and I drafted a modification which states that the fence will be removed and I added a subsequent condition, condition 53 of the comprehensive permit which states that uh, 14 arborvitaes will be planted in its place and that if the arborvitaes weren't planted by November of last year that a $200 escrow would be held until they were all planted. Uh, so I would request that the board act, uh, sign the modification based on the vote from a year ago. I have one uh, comment, no, two comments. One comment is we have a letter from the building inspector as to 14 Manion Place that reads, as built survey of all site work including utilities, building improvements, and land grading has not been received to the best of my knowledge. It is not, no. no. And I actually uh, spoke with Russ Wilson and he will have an as built plan within the next two weeks. I asked him to make two copies, one for submittal to the building inspector and one for submittal for your file. Um, Dan had, uh, the developer had actually finished most of the work in December, or January, uh, so really most of the site work in the spring, now early summer, has been uh, loam removal and, and some seeding and um, he has a couple pieces of equipment on the property still in that area, it needs to be loamed and seeded, but nothing that will hold up the as-built. Do you have the final occupancy for the final building? Yes. Even though they, Roland didn't get the uh, as-built drawings? Well, the as-built, the last the unit would have had to have been uh, phased in for all the as-builds to be finished anyway. So he has, we will make sure that he has the final plan. It's a condition of the permit. So if we so don't... the last building isn't finished yet? No, it is. I'm saying the as-built generally isn't completed until you phase in the last unit because you need it to have it exist before you can do the as-built. Okay. Yeah. This seems to me one of those things that's pretty easy to fall under cracks that engineers get lazy about doing and it doesn't ever actually happen or get turned in. I think we should not grant anything until Roland has everything he needs. We're actually not granting anything tonight. We're signing a decision that we made a year ago that we never solidified. I know, but writing. Roland's asking us to make sure we get that. Well, has, Is there a way has to Roland issued a CO in the last? Yes. Yeah, that's what okay, I just well, asked. that's. You know, that's his, he could have withheld that. And what we understand as well that the, um, that the plans are outstanding. If the board would like to 
take action on this and continue just for the discussion purposes the as bill plans to their next meeting. That way you don't and I don't lose track of the fact that they're absolutely due. Um, and that just so you know. Idea. Hmm? That would satisfy Cheryl, and that's not a bad idea. And then if we didn't do it, then we would be in violation of the comprehensive permit itself, and no one could start finding us $300 per incident per day uh, for not submitting them. So that's not our the intention. Problem, the problem is you could turn it over to the condo association and be right. gone. Roland could not see that it didn't right. happen, and it could be a year from now that we discover right. we didn't get this done. This um, is, yeah. Let, let me... Uh, ask another question that's bothering your hand keeps going up. Do you want to speak first? Well, I have another question that's bothering me, and that is when we made this decision with you, mm -hmm. there was a couple of meetings. We had continued it to hear what happened next. And one meeting you came and the abutter didn't, another meeting the abutter came and you didn't. Right. And when I was going back through the minutes, it appeared to me that the last time the abutter was here, she was unhappy with the height. Even though you and the abutter had reached agreement, right. she was unhappy with the height of the trees. Right. And then at the next continued hearing, neither of you showed up. Right. So can you just tell me what happened with that? Yeah, I mean, the, we had come here with, uh, I, I can't, her name, it's, I think uh, Mrs. Charlesworth, yes. who was the direct yes. abutter, and she um, wanted some, well, first, we had five trees that were slated for way at the end of that area on the southerly portion beyond her property line that had basically no use um, for the screening after the site visit, the initial site visit. So what we came back to the board with was we already had five that we were on the hook for, so why don't we plant an additional 14 all the way down the property line? And she was satisfied with that, that they would be arborvitaes and they would be planted and that they would eventually have a screening on that side. Um, and so we planted them all and the board uh, removed the need for the five down the southerly end of that um, where they were previously going to be planted where there's no, uh, you know, her house is at the end of the last arborvitae. Then you and I had a site visit and uh, we inspected the trees after they had all been installed and uh, the, you satisfied that we had fulfilled the condition that the 19, uh, yes, excuse me, the 19 trees had been planted, but she was not satisfied with those 19 trees. Then, and what if we were to sign this modification that has already been voted, and we ask Shelley to send a letter to the zoning enforcement officer to please get the site plan and make a site visit to make sure that the trees, there are 14 that have taken but how, and that are how do we how do we give any guns to that? We we'll just have to ask him to do it. He's the zoning enforcement officer. Right. If he doesn't do it, then uh, then he um, no no not guns to make Roland do that, but give Roland a gun if well, he gets in the there. decision. If he gets there, the trees are all dead. It's or? in the decision. It's three hundred dollars a day fine. It's in our. It's in the. But does it get passed off to the condo fee condo no. association? No, it goes to Mr. Harvey. Okay. So so let's send him the letter to do that site visit and get the get the uh, as built plans. Mr. Okay. Harvey hasn't turned over the association yet, so he is the association. And that way you don't have to come back again because right. we're not going to enforce this. He needs to enforce it. Right. Okay. As long as, long as he has a weapon <laughs> to make sure that these things happen. Because yeah. sometimes we tie his hands and so, make it hard for him to enforce things. So I don't know that we need to vote to do this. It's already been done. So we just need to pass it around. So, to the so this, this is what we discussed October 18, 2012. Okay. Then we continued to November 2012. Mm -hmm. And then we continued to December 2012. Right. And the reason that it was and continued it, from November to December was because um, at the time we already had four trees that we had purchased. And we were hoping to try to find some late, more late fall arborvitaes. So the board said, well, can we put an escrow in place to, in case you don't plant the trees? And we said, well, let's continue to the, the December meeting, and then if we don't get the trees in place, we will put a $200 escrow in place uh, so that you can plant them in the, in the spring, because obviously we wouldn't have been able to get trees planted in December. But this condition 53 says any tree not planted by November 15, 2012. That's what the minutes had said. Yes, but, but the thing is, we were still discussing it in, in November. We were still discussing it in December. We hadn't signed off. No, the, in this, by December it was done. That's why there was no need okay. for me to come back. As Sherry had come out and done a site inspection, and there was no need for me to come back because um, 
the trees were planted, so there was no $200 per tree as per required. Okay. What I didn't is complete is actually having a physical piece of paper for you to sign to actually enforce what you had voted. Okay. Yeah. But the, that's the question, and what you say is accurate, but the question is, did we vote it? It was voted, right? We don't need to vote it again? Um, and it was moved voted. in second order to continue the hearing to December 13th, we don't have minutes of December 13th. No, yeah, one second. Never really voted. It, it was never, never really voted. We kept continuing, and then they didn't show up. Um, My, in fairness, I did not just show up. We had a site visit, and right, I was right, told right, that right, the right. situation had been. No, so we completed. said that at the yeah, time. Sorry, we said I'm that. Not, at the time. Not, I didn't mean that to sound <laughs> as harsh as it. I would have not. come if the board had wanted me here in December, but. Um, yeah, we just kept continuing the yeah. hearing. So I think we need to vote it. And if the board wants to revote it, um, I can change the date on that November 12th date to be to, to help so, to help solve your problem, Cheryl, as well. I can uh, we can change that November 12th, 2012 date to be 30 days from now. That way, if Roland goes out there and there is an issue, you have you have a gun. That might solve all the problems. Actually, revote it, put a 30-day date in, and then if Roland has issues uh, with what we've done, did anyone get a chance to go look at those? Are we I, ready? I did. Yeah. Are they healthy? Yes. Are they alive? Yeah. Yes, I was quite impressed that they were healthy Yay. and they were fuller than, and, and absolutely what she said about not having the five way down here, they weren't going to do any good, so we bunched them up more up near the neighbors where they were going to do some oh, so, so it was successful. Yeah. Yay. I think we went out on a lousy day, too, if I recall. We were yes. knee deep in icicles. I have the copy of the December 13th, 2012 minutes. And it just says neither the owner nor the representative was present. Right. So we just put the whole thing off. Okay, so let's vote it tonight. Let's make a motion to vote it tonight. And let's vote it with the change of date as you just as you just indicated to um, uh, July, let's say July fifteenth, two thousand twelve. Is that enough time? Mm hmm Did you need to appoint someone here? Two thousand twelve. Well, who was on it before? I don't want to see who was on wait, it before. Wait. I didn't stand down from that. July 15th of what? 2014. Oh, I don't think I did. What are you looking for? Uh, we want to change this November to July. Right. Okay. 2014. Right. No. And we can just do that in pen. You can. Yep. And then. Yeah. Um, the voting members on this were. It doesn't must. Patrick Joyce was appointed to be the fifth voting member for this hearing. Which hearing? 694A, October 18, 2000. That was October, but it could continue in November and December. Why well, know, but he. Okay. So if he, he was, was in it then, let's leave yeah. a minute now, okay? Patrick. Well, you also got John Cantino in there. He's not here tonight. Or do you want John just to sign up? No, we'll have Patrick sign it because he was on one of them. He was appointed as an alternate on one of them. All right. Do we need all five? I only need three signatures. Huh? I only need three signatures. But there's signatures no reason not to allow Mr. Joyce to sign it. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay. So, with the change to November to July fifteenth, twenty fourteen. Yep. Do you want to you want to sign yours and pass it then? Put it. Yeah. You got to sign first. You need three people. You, you say, I'll send it to Patrick and then I'll say. I'll take slot number two. Wow, how long have you guys been working on Manual Place? The permit was issued in 2006. So, and I think we applied in uh, December of 2004. Wow. Yeah. Ten years. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm glad he's all sold out. Yeah. And this is the fourth modification, so I think I've been back here a few times as well. <laughs> Not that we don't like seeing you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will tell you That's that That's all right. We, we, we can do it, but we don't mind having a little less business yeah. either. Yeah. With the um, with the assignment of the permit that you were talking about earlier, if if the 
if the permit says successors and assigns and it's a condo association, the condo association can make the application. So but you'd have to have somebody contained if it's and if it's individual homeowners. Well, they didn't appoint a condo association. Uh, yet. Only have a and this houses. fellow didn't have any support to come forward with this request, and we were just trying to figure out a yeah. way to do it. That's difficult. Do you want to sign? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. you can't sign with a pencil. Oh, we need a notary. Need a notary? I'll, I can do it. Oh, and then I'll bring it back to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay, any other business? I wanted to talk about the housing. Community. Oh, please, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, <coughs> the housing committee, which you guys appointed me to, at its first meeting, and if this is a meeting that's facilitated by the, you know, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and what, and there really was not, I would say, a great show of public interest in this. There, all the various boards were represented, but there were only a few non-board members there. The only reason I wanted to, I, I have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, which you know has all the data they presented. I'm going to give it to Shelley to copy if anyone wants one or maybe she can just have one in the office. But what was interesting is that they, you know, they did an abstract of all kinds of data about Littleton, which was um, enlightening. What they were trying to do was to get to what kind of housing currently is not being met. Um, and it sort of came down to elderly housing. And, members, and the few members of the public who were there were elderly people who were presently looking for places to move to that uh, they could not find presently in Littleton. Um, it wasn't, there wasn't an issue, there wasn't talk about elderly poor, elderly market or whatever, but it, would, it seemed like it came down to, to that. People who wanted to move out of their homes into something that they could manage and stay in Littleton. So, I'll just you know, pass that along. One one thing that um, you know, a lot of talk about the SHI and all of the the various permutations of you know the threat, the ten percent threshold that you know that we're meeting, and, and that you know much of that was education for the other people there. Um, then there were um, abstracts about uh, you know basically affordability, and it was sort of interesting because first of all, Littleton, I think has a higher median, you know, household income than you would think. It's over $100,000. Um, but there is a significant number of households, like I think almost 30%, 20 to 30% that are essentially at the poverty rate, which surprised me. And uh, they, they didn't break it out, but they intimated that a good number of those were elderly people. So I would infer from that, that there is a need for some kind of subsidized um, elderly housing. I would suggest, if you're taking things back to the board, that my practical experience agrees with that. But the elderly housing that we need needs to be within walking distance of the town center, the library, the town hall, all of those things. Um, because you get to a point where, th where people need to be able to walk and get to these places by walking and proximity becomes important if if this if it if this comes down to any kind of of brass tax or I, I you know I don't know what kind of brass tax are coming it's coming because frankly where are the development sites within walking distance of the common I mean well we have one it's currently a 40b yeah, but let me tell you, because I live in that neighborhood, that no elderly person could ever get across Great Road, you know, safely. It just, you know, they, there, there's a whole variety of things that would have to happen that, um, you know, would make things, because basically, you know, our town center is not pedestrian friendly. I mean, it has some, you know, accommodation, but not much. But uh, but that that isn't a site that's being offered for development. No, that's the not. problem. It's not. I understand so, that. So, um, Anyway, I, I suggested to one woman I talked to, to to you know look into the flats at 15 Gray Road because you know if there's elevators, there's you know 
covered parking in one building. You can walk to crossroads. You could walk to crossroads. <laughs> Although that seems to be the only thing that's left in that shopping center. And roll back home. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I'll, I'll keep you up to date. <coughs> the next meeting is, um, I think it's in September. And what I... I asked at the end of the meeting about because I wanted specific examples of if you identify a need, how do you go about as a town board, you know, Addressing making this that. happen? I didn't get any answers. I mean, you know, they talked about nonprofits, they talked about this, they talked about that, but there wasn't any, you know, it town. I mean, um, town governments don't have a very good track record of of trying to generate the type of development that they think they need. And I, you know, I'm. You couldn't I, find any meat under the sauce? I couldn't see how we get from, you know, you can say, oh, yeah, we need this, but how does that happen? You know, I don't know. I wonder if there's any chance or, or way of expanding Pine Tree. Well, that, that was built under a program specific <coughs> that required, it was built under, a, I think, a agriculture department program that, because uh, there were, there were a couple proposed that didn't get built at the, you know, like 20 or 25 years ago, but they had to be within a mile of the town center. Because there's Pine Tree and then there's, um, what's the one that's behind Littleton Inn? That's Pine Tree. No, no that's Littleton Green. Littleton, uh, Green. <coughs> Green. Um, both of those have long waiting lists. But aren't, lists. They, aren't they townhouses, though? I mean, they have walk-ups, or I, that's what I don't get about those. The um, two stories. Apartments. Yeah, they, they I mean they, they have stairs, but yeah. still on the other hand they're they're very reasonably priced housing within walking distance yeah. of the town center. Someone who can't drive anymore can walk to the grocery store. The one the one suggestion or the one thing that was called out that <coughs> I could see potentially happening is what they call inclusionary zoning, which is when a developer receives a permit for thirty houses he has to provide, and I know Acton does this, he has to provide a percentage either in cash or he doesn't have to do it on that site, but he has to provide something, you know, some number of units to, you know, to be dedicated to the housing authority or, or whatever. And that is something that the town could, and you wouldn't generate a lot, but maybe you could do, you know, three or four a year <laughs> or something. And the other thing that I didn't like about their analysis was that when they analyze affordable housing, they just look at the SHI, which we've been dealing with. We all know that in Littleton, there is a lot of, a, you know, there's a trailer park. There's a couple trailer parks. Sorry. There's there, there are, you know, neighborhoods that are very, have very modest homes. There's all kinds of affordable housing in Littleton that isn't included in this, you know, um, analysis. There's lots of properties currently for sale under 300000 Yeah. Okay. Can we move on? Thank you for your attendance. <coughs> and if anyone has any ideas. Um, and Shelly, could I'd you like scan that? Scan that up. I'm going to give this to you. If you scan it up to us, then we can mm -hmm. look at it without bugging you. Does anybody take a look at the uh, FIBA sign now that the FIBA sign is up? It's not as bad as I thought. It's not. And, you know, I've heard a couple of comments about how it looks nice and not too overscale or anything else. <coughs> so here it is, a chance that we just approved that they have it up and now we know what it looks like. And, and uh, you know. Um, Bill has prepared templates for decisions, and that leads me to who's going to write the first decision. I'll do, <laughs> I'll do the one for the. Uh, I'm not going to be wrong. A couple of weeks for this for the car washing. Have you done? Have you done one in a long time? No, but a lot of people have done them. I can do one. You want to do the one for the first decision? <coughs> oh, sure. I'll do those cute little guys. Yeah, I've done that kind before. Okay, and I'll do the second one. Anyway, the templates are out. I'm going to have. Um, I think I'm going to have, have copies of them there if you want to pass them home. Do you want them hard copies or do you want them Word well, perfect to you? My thinking is if you want to pass out hard copies, those, anybody to take a look at them and comment on them. If, you know, and Sherry has already noticed a couple of 
Spell and misspelled word or whatever else. A couple other things that need to be squeaked in there. Um, but if anybody's got any questions or comments on that before we actually set. finalize it, I then I will send it to Shelley and Shelley can distribute it Oops, by email to everybody that you can have as a template. Um, now, what, what I would like to point out with these, um, there are three of them here. One is for a special permit, one is for a variance, and one is for a special permit for non-conforming lot or structure or whatever else, because we do a lot of those. Right? It's set up so it's on the board letterhead. Um, in the italics is where you have to fill information in when you go through. Um, you know, in some of the stuff, the opening paragraph is very standard. Um, I changed the municipal building here to Littleton Town Offices because I was talking to Shelley, and that's where everything goes out as the Littleton Town Offices. So that was a change. Um, the Littleton Independent is just a newspaper circulated Littleton. It's not printed and acted anymore. Um, down through with all the members listed, I listed all the members. The, the standard mem regular members or the alternate members, whenever you write a decision, you have to go in and modify that to whoever was present and voting and not voting. Um, getting down to in all three of these, you have to list whatever information came in you know, that was submitted with the application. And then later on, you can, as you do the presentation, uh, list whatever information was presented or documents presented, uh, maybe information from the Planning Board, Board of Health, Conservation, Building Inspector, whoever. And then it goes into findings. Um, no, it is a little bit different for each each of these, depending on the case. The decision for the board, again, you got to put in there, um, know how it came out, you know, and what to follow the motion. Some of the other language after that is just straight standard language for, for all of them. Um, I got you know, signed by Jeffrey Yates, who's a clerk. If Jeff's not going to do it and he's not available and John Cantina's going to do it, then that needs to be changed. You do need to enter in here, and this is something that Jeff asked me a while ago, uh, put in the book and page number for the deed that's Just right on the application, the application. And, and the deeds and the information we have. So you need to put that in here. Um, then there's a statement by the town clerk after 20 days. <clears throat> uh, there are the templates for all three of them. Uh, again, if anybody's got a court, anything that needs to change, spelling, grammar corrections, or whatever else, let me know in the next two weeks, and you know I will get it corrected and off to Shelley, and she can send it to everybody so that you have it as a, a template. Thank you. Thank you for doing and, it. And That's a lot of work. Cheryl, do you have my email? I do have your email, but I'm just thinking. What we we did, we granted theirs as an insignificant change to the 40B, so I don't think it falls under a special permit or permit. So uh, these templates don't aren't part of what I'm doing. Do you have the one we did <coughs> for, um, want to send her that yeah, one and let her use that as a one. template. Do you mind Thank doing you. that? Thank you. The one we did for, uh, yeah, because she can just cut and paste. I can yeah. cut and paste. Yeah. It, it, what I was thinking that because we do a lot of the special purpose non-conforming, <coughs> did I get a lot of those on my computer? <coughs> when, with the template, when I send it to Shelley, I'll pull out one of those as a standard. You know, you can just look at the language and everything else, and I'll send that off to to Shelley. Um, Cheryl, that reminds me. Just make a note as to who you had for voting alternates, because I always forget that when I sit down oh, and write it. It was um, Rod and Alan. Yeah, with the decision to say Right, because I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't on, you on that one. You weren't voting on that one yet. The, uh, in my mind, I had Patrick and, <coughs> Patrick <coughs> and <coughs> not John. I would, <coughs> I would like to, uh, put, a land phone on my uh, oh, good. list, Jay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you can go across my front. It's Bill all right. Bill didn't sign the second one, though. Bill needs to sign it. Go ahead, Patrick. I'll uh, nine seven eight. Mm -hmm. I can't 
Do you want that other number also listed, or just the whole list? Okay. Hey, Shelley, get rid of 3985 on me. I'm usually good about this stuff. I don't, I don't ever check that email, that voicemail. You have my correct. Yeah. Wait, no, I'm looking at this copy. If you want a second one, use my office, which is 486-3231. Okay. No, Joan. Next question. Um, there were reappointments. Did they happen on Monday? Last Monday, I was out of town. Uh, yes. <laughs> so we Good have thing, to be, because you guys all voted tonight. Yeah. We have to be sworn in. Yes. Well, you're returning members, so I think your time frame is okay. new members. But also, they still have to get sworn in. have to be sworn no. in. You have to go up to the town clerk and get sworn in. There's also folks that have not um, done the ethics training that was required to be done within 30 days because Diane said that not everyone had done it. I did not ask her who. Okay. I, I didn't do it. I've done it before numerous times. So I've got to do it again. So, send, off, send off an email or something. You have to, you have to send her. You have, you, not only do you have to do it, you have to send her the certificate. I, I did that. I think. Yeah. No, I mean, I know I did it. Diane needs it. She'll send it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure that she got the certificate and someone should give John a call and, and remind him if he hasn't. I didn't ask her who. Patrick, what was your landline? 978-486-0536. Thank you. And Shelley, you got rid of 3985 on me. And do you have an email? My cell is first. So he doesn't. I have a different email. Oh. Uh, the Edward Jones one is the same, but the ABLE financials changed to go to advisor. Go to, two words, advisor with an O at gmail.com. Okay. Shelly, I want you to just email the, the, the updated version out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your pencil. And thank you for bringing me a zoning book that I didn't realize was here until after I used bills. <laughs> and thank you for matching glasses with me. Oh. Oh, we do. Um, I make a motion to close the hearing. The hearing to adjourn. To adjourn. Sorry. You make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So turn up the cameras and we're done. Who's the fifth voting on that?